Hello, welcome to Katayana. This is Katayana's new series, Globetrotting, where every Saturday I take you to a different country and share that respective country's story with you. And the countries chosen will be in alphabetic order A to Z. Today's story comes from a country beginning with the letter C and the country chosen is Croatia. Croatia has a number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites to its credit and one of those sites is the city of Motovan which is in the county of Istria. Now the city of Motovan or Istria generally has, a, has many local folk tales related to giants. People believe that many years back giants lived along with humans and they also believe that the city of Motovan was built by the giants. Now, one such story from that land is that of the giant called Veli Joes. And this story was written by a 20th century writer called Vladimir Nazor, uh, who uh, at that time, uh, he saw that the Croatia was under the regime of German and Italian authorities. And so to reflect the struggles and inequality of the people of Croatia, he wrote this story called Veli Joes. Here's the story. Many years back lived a giant by name Velijos who was 300 years old and he was a slave to the people of Motovan or generally to Istria. He herded their cattle, he plowed their lands, he hunted games for them, he cut down trees, he built walls, he built towers, he dragged the ships onto the anchors and he frightened enemies too. But the people there didn't treat him uh, respectfully. They used to mock at him, insult him, shame him, humiliate him. So Veli Joes always had an expression of uh, obedience, but also that of suffering on his face. But soon he thought that was going to change because an official from Venice who had visited to Moto One once was so impressed with the work of Veli Joes that he offered him a job. He was going there to Venice, to a new place, to a new country, uh, to a new city and work for new people. He had good dreams and good hope. And he was waiting just the day after Easter when a ship would come and take him to Venice. But the people here at Moto One were not happy. They resisted. They thought, look, Veli Joes is submissive as a pasture. He is healthy as a plant and he is stupid as a calf. He is such a cheap labor. How can we let him go? Without him, no work will happen here in the city. Who will do all the work? But still, the authority there at Venice had such a good relationship with the state head here at Istria that Veli Joes had to be sent. Then, just the day after Easter, came a ship along the river Mirna to pick up Veli Joes to Venice. Now, as he sat on the ship and he went, as the ship went farther and farther and the land of Istria just went out of sight, Veli Joes felt a sense of freedom in him and he started dreaming about his new life to new place. Then suddenly, he heard a very sad song coming from below the deck. And when he heard closer, yes, it was a sad song sung with some, and also there was some clinking noise. Then he pushed aside the deck cover to see there another giant. And that giant also looked at Veli Joes. They were staring at each other now. Then Veli Joes asked him, who are you and what are you doing here? To that the giant said, my name is Ilya. And I am the one driving the ship. But who are you? Where are you coming from? And where are you going? To that he said, My name is Veli Joes. I am from Moto One and I am going to Venice to uh, serve my new master. To that, Ilya said, No, no, no. No, Veli Joes, don't do this. Don't do the mistake that I did. That chief, that uh, person there, he is a fraud. He is a cheat. 20 years back, he too promised me of a beautiful life there at Venice. But you know what he did? He cut my legs to my knees, see? And he threw me here in the galley, chained me here and put me to keep driving the ship. From 20 years, I have been doing only this job. I have no freedom. I have not seen the sunlight. But you, you still have time. 
you have your hands healthy hands your place is motor one go back there and you have to work but not just for others but for yourself don't don't accept injustice don't fall prey to this kind of fraud listen when you choose i'm telling you tonight there is going to be a huge storm and this ship is going to sink i am going to die and all the others on board also but you are going to escape somehow and lead a happy life a free life for yourself promise me promise me that you will never be a slave to anybody again now welly joes was so taken aback and he was so feeling so much for the words of ilia that he promised him that he will never become a slave then as ilia had told that night there was a huge storm huge waves blew on the ship the ship tumbled toppled over and fell but as the ship was going to sink velicho somehow escaped swam and reached the shore and he saw the ship at the distance sinking down in the waters but the words of ilia kept ringing in his ears and so immediately as if there was a new ray of hope a new spring in him he started to find a new life for himself and as he went he on the way met another giant by name jurek who was working in the land uh, who was plowing the land of his master he persuaded him forced him to throw uh, whatever he had in his hand into the river and come and lead a free life and jurek took um velijos followed him and took him to other different places they also convinced and persuaded other different giants to be free to live a life of their own and so velijos had gathered 20 comrades with him and he became their chief they became he became their leader and soon these giants went into the woods deep into the woods and on top of a mountain there they built a beautiful city for themselves they erected walls they built towers uh, they made gardens they made fields and they just lived happily all for themselves they were not slaves to anybody now but the mountain they were living on was very close to the city of motowan now people witnessed that there was veli joes with other giants and what is he doing and how dare he is living there when he has to be here in the city working for them now when veli joes had left all the work there had come to a stand still there was no field work happening no repair work of the buildings happening they wanted veli joes back so the army officials the knights the noblemen brave citizens all of them started to get veli joes by hook or by crook but the governor of istria by name sivetta stayed back he thought brute force is not going to work now for veli joes it is too early for him there will be a time when veli joes will come back but it is not now he thought and he let the others go now all these people who went there surrounded the hill and ordered veli joes to come back but he said no i am free here i am living a free life with my friends i am not coming back this angered the people and they started shooting arrows throwing spears stones this injured villagers and the other giants they also got angry and they started kicking the horses kicking the people on their chest and as if that was not enough they went into the forest and uprooted the oak trees and using it as a broom started sweeping the people left and right now fearing that they will all lose their life like that the people feeling defeated came back to the city of motowan and the governor sivetta rejoiced that they all were defeated they were they are all lost in front of velijos then days passed and life became to normal see people began getting back to their routines then there at the top of the hill the giants were also as usual doing their work when the giant jurek as he was digging a pit he saw that there was some sound his shovel made and when he looked closer there was something shining when he dug it deeper and deeper he saw that there was gold there was silver cups there were gold uh, what was it necklaces earrings rings gold coins silver cups what not there was a big big treasure there he called when he chose another giants to see they were so happy that they found such big treasure they collected all of them kept it safely in their storeroom somewhere in the city and covered the pits all in the mud 
lest people from the city got to know about it. Then it so happened that one day again, the people of Motovan were really impatient. They were growling. They wanted Venejos to come back. Why wasn't he coming back? They wanted somehow. So they asked Governor Sivetta to go and somehow convinced him, maybe go and have a peaceful negotiation with him. So Sivetta went with some other officials with him, taking along with him. He went there and had a peaceful talk with Venejos to come back. But Velijos again didn't budge. He was stubborn. He said, no, I am living a free life here. I, am, I don't want to be slave to you people anymore. <sighs> now, seeing that he was so, so stubborn, he wouldn't move. The officials, uh, Governor v uh, Sivetta started moving when Velijos stopped them and said, wait, you're not going empty handed now that you have come and politely spoken to me. Take off your hats, he said. They took out their hats. Now, Veli Joes, with his big fists, he started dropping gold coins, silver coins, necklaces, rings, and these officials were dumbstruck. They were shocked with their eyes and mouth wide open. They were looking at the gold and silver ring happening on their hats. In the same shell-shocked state, they took it all to the city, and the citizens looked at it. What? Velijos and the other giants are living on this treasure. Oh no, that they are very powerful. What can we do? We can't do anything now. But still, we need to somehow get this. But what to do? They all sat thinking. But there were four men among the citizens who thought they were brave and they could do something. So at night, they sneaked there in the, on top of the hill where Velijos and the other giants lived. They started slowly digging the pits to see where they could find the treasure. But they were caught by Velijos. And Velijos said, I know you're looking for the gold. But if you want the gold, you have to work with, in the fields with me. And the people agreed. The four men agreed. But the people there who saw those four men shamelessly working with the giant, they got angry. How can these people shamelessly work for the slave who was working for us? This is disgraceful. We can't accept this. They got really angry. And when the four men one day received, uh, got back to the city of Motowan, these people got together, started pelting stones at them so harshly, so brutally that all those four men died. Upon checking their pockets, they found that there were two gold coins in each of their pockets. What? Village Joes is paying them salary? Two gold coins every day? Then... Even if we work for villagers, we will get gold coins and we will also grow rich. This is not a bad idea. Anyway, all the work here is in a standstill. We don't have any grains. We are starving to death. Death, the state is not doing anything to take care of us. We better go and work with villagers, they all thought. And everybody, one by one, all of them started going and seeking job with villagers. Even the knights, the noblemen, the army men, everybody went except Governor Sivetta, because he knew that it was still not time for Velijos. People went there not to serve Velijos, but for the gold coins. And he sat there and only waited. He built a shack outside the city of Motowan and only kept observing what was happening up in the mountains. Days went by, months went by, people worked, the giants worked. And one day, the giants got a bountiful harvest of different crops, fruits and vegetables. And one night, these giants got together and rejoiced. They celebrated because this was for the first time they had done something on their own for themselves. They were so happy. They sang, they danced, they drank. And then in the night came a point when they sat to decide who is going to get how much of the share in the harvest. Then the giant jury got up and said, no matter how much we all get, but Veli Joes is not going to get much at all. Because you know what he did? He got his people from the city of Motowan to work there in the fields. And he was paying from the treasure that I found out without seeking my permission. And he got work done from his people and he didn't seem to work much at all. So he's not going to get much share. He argued, 
No villagers retorted that, no, you can't speak to me like this. I am your chief. Remember, I was the one who brought you all here, promising you a life, a free life, an independent life. Now you talk to me like this. And the other giants joined Jurek. And they were convinced that Veli Joes, whatever he did was wrong. Now there was fight, there was argument, there were quarrels to such an extent that Veli Joes got so angry that he set up fire in that city of giants. And the fire burned down everything, the city, the grains, the crops and whatever, the treasure, everything was burnt down. And there, Governor Siveta saw there high up in the mountain, there was fire erupting as if there was a volcano that erupted and he could hear the howls and the cries from there. And then gradually he saw Veli Joes come and stand in front of him. And Veli Joes narrated whatever that happened there on the hills. Now Siveta, who very cunningly took this to his advantage and he said, now do you see Veli Joes? What your people did to you, <laughs> that was not the place for you. Now, if you want to live, if you want to have a life of your own, now you must listen to me. Now that your city is gone, your crops are gone, harvest is gone, you better listen to me. Now, Veli Joes had to listen. The next day, all the giants there on top of the hill, not knowing what to do, where to go, because they did not have a chief, they did not have a leader like Veli Joes. So they all went back to their respective places to serve their old masters. Here, Governor Siveta very proudly took Veli Joes into the city of Motowan. When the people saw Siveta bringing Veli Joes, they rejoiced. They celebrated, they howled, they cried, they whistled, they clapped, they went, embraced Siveta, got, they got him on the altar there at the center of the city, praised him, sang songs, all that was happening. But here, Veli Joes, when he saw the walls, the towers, the howling he heard, the whistles, the claps, the noises, he started feeling choked, suffocated. And he heard from somewhere, from inside, from somewhere in the heavens, the words of Elia. Veli Jos, promise me, you're not going to be a slave to anyone again. Now, here, when the people had finished rejoicing and doing all the dances, when they turned to Veli Jos to give him the orders, Veli Jos was nowhere to be seen. He had disappeared never to come back to the city of Motowan. If you like this story, give us a thumbs up. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Share this video with people who you think might be interested in watching. This is Lakshmi. I will see you next Saturday with a story from a country beginning with the letter D.